No, your eyes don't deceive you. This isn't some sort of old school camcorder with RGB lighting. It is a mini PC. And it comes with its own gimmick, which I've decided to call the power knob. So what does the knob do exactly? More after this message. Ezas Partition Master Professional is a comprehensive storage partitioning app for your PC or server. Resize and extend partitions, clone OS drives, convert MBR to GPT, and even recover lost or broken partitions. Find out more in the video description. Long time viewers will be thinking, hang on, haven't you reviewed this one before? Well, I did review a similar mini PC with the Ryzen 5600U, but this Ace PC Powerbox Mini features the 5700U, an 8 core, 16 thread processor with Vega graphics. And unlike the previous unit, the power knob here works without needing a BIOS update. So what does the knob of power do exactly? Well, AMD's 5700U can run in three different power modes, 10, 15, and 25 watts. The higher the power limit, the higher the performance, power draw, and fan noise. And now that I think about it, I'm going to have to do three times the amount of testing. Oh God. You can find the Ace PC Powerbox Mini on the Fisher website for 420 US dollars for the 32GB memory 512GB storage configuration. The 16GB configuration isn't any cheaper. Included is a simple accessory kit, just a manual, power supply, and HDMI. This Mini has a unique design and if you like it, I'm happy for you. One positive I'll throw out there is that I do like that it's a vertical standing Mini. Overall, the plastic quality is pretty good. The main body feels solid. The side panels, not so much. Last time I reviewed the similar unit, there was a lighting app you could use to change the RGB lighting, but that doesn't seem to be included on the Ace PC website. That being said, the only lighting customization I'd be interested in is turning it off. What's cool is how easy it is to access the memory and storage. Just pull off the magnetic side panel and you're done. There are two M.2 Gen 3 NVMe slots available for storage. One of them is occupied by a 512GB drive with a heatsink on it for cooling. And the memory is Alexa branded DDR4 3200. The Powerbox Mini has an audio jack, dual USB 3 5 gigabit, and a Type-C 10 gigabit with display out on the front. On the rear, you've got another two USB 3 5 gigabit, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, Realtek Gigabit LAN, and Barrel Jack Power Input. Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth are included thanks to the Realtek 8852BE chip. You can run three displays on this mini PC, maxing out at 4K60. The power knob clicks in to turn on the unit and can be twisted to change the power modes. Silent mode runs the CPU at 10 watts base and lights up blue. Auto mode runs at 15 watts and lights up green. In performance mode, runs at 25 watts, and is red. It's an interesting gimmick which allows you to limit the maximum power usage of the CPU to reduce fan noise and temps. Here's an example showing the power knob being twisted to reduce the power limit, and you can see the frames per second drop as well. You can move your champion by right-clicking a destination. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed when you fire it up. Ubuntu also works fine off a of USB, so most Linux distros should be good to go. Alright, let's get into the benchmarks. I reviewed a 5700U Mini recently, so we can see how it compares to that one. When it comes to single core performance, it doesn't matter what power mode you use. The result is the same, and it's the lowest in this lineup. In multi-core, the performance does depend on the power knob. An 18% increase at 15 watts, and just 9% at 25 watts. Diminishing returns right there. The AU Star still manages to come out ahead at 25 watts. It's another 7% ahead of the Powerbox Mini. The Powerbox does better in video encoding, beating a few minis at the 25 watt performance mode. The AU Star didn't do well in comparison. 3D Max DX11 is really interesting. The AU Star is performing like the Powerbox Mini at 10 watts. But at 25 watts, the increase is large, almost 24%, and pretty close to the 5800H. DX12 has about the same result. The included NVMe drive in the Powerbox Mini doesn't have great sequential read and write performance. 
But the random 4K is what most people will need in day-to-day -day computing, and for that, it's fine. I thought I'd try 4K video editing on the 5700U, and it's not a great experience. Scrubbing across the timeline and playback can be pretty laggy. You can see the CPU is spiking to 100% load, and it slows down. This would frustrate me to no end during the editing process. Intel units mitigate this with hardware video decoding. So as always, if video editing is the main workload, go Intel. The Powerbox Mini has been pushed as a gaming machine in the promotional material, and while it can game, it's mostly the esports stuff. Forget modern AAA titles. Let's see how it holds up with its better graphics result against the AU Star. Dota 2 shows a large bump up in frame rate for the Powerbox Mini, sometimes by up to 50%. Valorant also performs better on the Powerbox Mini, but not by a large margin, around 10%. Same with League of Legends. And Counter-Strike 2 as well. There's around a 5% improvement in GTA 5. Dumb fucking cops. Who stitch? Come on, let's get to the chopper. We move quick, we can beat the train. We're getting... No difference in frame rate when emulating this Wii U title. And pretty much the same again in the PS3 emulation test. Alright, idle power draw on this one is a bit higher than the AU star. Max power draw depends on the power mode, but the power box mini, like the AU star, has low power draw compared to the rest of the stack. Your maximum CPU temp will depend on the power mode. It's very low at 10 watts and goes up to reasonable levels at the top. When it comes to fan noise, 10 watts is quiet and I thought it was okay up to 15 watts. 25 is where you really start hearing it under load. The included NVMe drive doesn't have a controller temperature sensor, but it looks to have held up okay and has a heatsink. In the BIOS I found an AC power loss option and wake system from S5 if those are useful to you. Right, let's wrap this up. The power knob is a unique idea and it works well. Whether it's useful to you is something you'll need to marinate over. The Mini is super easy to upgrade thanks to the magnetic side panel. Performance is good for a Ryzen 5700U. It's a vertical standing mini, which I like, but I'm not a fan of the design or RGB lighting. The Powerbox Mini is pricey for a 5700U, but if you want the power knob feature, this is one of the few options available. And if you're looking for a more budget friendly option with a unique twist, check out the HPC PicoBox Pro Review right here. Cheers.